But if I were special counsel and going back to my federal prosecutor days and my federal public defender days, <clears throat> I would look at one, whether or not there was an overarching conspiracy, because as I said earlier, no one person could pull this off alone. It's impossible. And two, I would look at all of the findings of the House Intel work and also the IG report that demonstrated multiple levels of, of failures in duty, intentional or otherwise, by people as high as the director of the FBI, the deputy director of the FBI, the head of counterintelligence for the FBI, Peter Strzok, and others on down. And I would immediately run two parallel investigations. One, a conspiracy. Two, I would look at the separate statutes that were substantively violated by the actions of one, two, three, four, five, six, or other people um, to look at the underlying actions in that conspiracy. And I would be running two investigations. Well, so let's let's start with uh, with the conspiracy side. So what what does that what would that look like? Well, so on its face, people say conspiracy, and they're like, oh, ooh, you're talking about like made up stuff. No, conspiracy is a federal crime. If you break the law, you have to show a substantive act, an overt act, in support of the conspiracy, and. What we found was multiple people in roles as high as the director of the FBI, the director, deputy director of the FBI, and others withheld information from a federal judge and or lied to an inspector general and or lied under oath at congressional testimony and or were the ones in charge of verifying that search warrant that certified everything in it was accurate and verified, which the law requires, knowing that the opposite was true, meaning that it was a fraudulent warrant and submitted it before a federal judge. So those are the things I would be looking at as to who all the players are in that space. And those names are very common by now. And as, as we alluded to earlier, 17 people were removed from office because of our investigation. So I would start with those 17 people. Okay, so that's, there's there's uh, the the conspiracy side. What about these individual statutes that you're talking about? Yeah, and I'm not uh, a you know constitutional lawyer or have those any of those statutes memorized. But when you submit something to a federal judge as a prosecutor and the FBI agent who signs the warrant saying all these facts are true, um, you are basically held out to a standard that says if you lie to the federal judge it is a federal offense. There's a statute for that. So you can be prosecuted there under. You can also be placed under contempt of court proceedings, which is separate, and you don't need the Department of Justice for that. That's just initiated by a federal judge. And I would love for any one of these federal judges to initiate contempt proceedings, but I have not seen or heard about that happening, uh, which is a separate failure, uh, in my opinion. And then I would also be looking at substantive crimes, such as Kleinsmith. He purposely, intentionally deleted uh, the word not from an email that was used in a FISA application in reference to Carter Page. That is a substantive crime. There is no way, in my opinion, he did that on his own. And there is no way other people in the FBI either instructed him or told him to do it and or other people did not know about it. And so every one of those people in that chain of command with that knowledge is liable, as liable, if not more liable, than Kevin Kleinsmith. And I would prosecute those individuals for lying to a federal court like they did Kevin Kleinsmith. And just to quickly kind of refresh everyone's memory, the removal of that one word basically, you know, changed the entire meaning of the email. From, Completely. Right. It was basically saying, did Carter Page assist a federal government agency in the past? And they made it as out to be Carter Page did not assist a federal government agency in the past, which goes to the individual's credibility. And Carter Page was the target of the search warrant. So to intentionally uh, delete or add a word that, as you said, completely changes the narrative is illegal, as we were shown by one, the only prosecution we've seen in this case. But there are others too, and I, and I forgot to mention, I guess while you're running these two parallel investigations, and prosecutions, I would also run a leaks investigation. That is, whether or not classified information was leaked um, and by whom. Now, we know it was leaked because the media, when reviewing cases 
or matters that involve leaks of classified information during this Russiagate hoax, the media went apoplectic and they just discharged their total duties of journalistic integrity and intentionally disclosed classified information, as was shown with so many individuals in the mainstream media, and they didn't care. Um, that's a separate matter, the media side of it, which I'm not going to take up. That they were willing to do so is just so far beyond the pale of journalism that it actually hurts the national security of our country, but only the American public can really deal with that. But the individuals in the media were fed this information by someone with a security clearance in the United States government. That's the only way they could receive this information by individuals at the Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and so on. Who are these individuals that, in high-ranking posts, because remember, the information they were leaking was known by a very small universe of people. Not everybody with a clearance had access to this information. And so you can narrow down the list to 15, maybe 20 people and say, was the director of the FBI involved? Was the deputy director of the FBI involved? Was the head of counterintel involved? Was a lawyer at the FBI involved? Who at the DOJ was involved? And any other individuals that were involved in the investigation. And then you can look at their accesses and look at when they were, or excuse me, you can look at when they had access to this information. And then I would look at their phones, their emails, their work phones, their private emails, meetings they had with individuals in the media, contacts they had within the individuals in the media, at or around the time of the disclosure in the media. And that's a leak of classified information. That is a federal offense punishable by, I think, over a decade in prison off the top of my head. Yeah, it's a pretty serious matter. But no one's been prosecuted for a leak of classified information. However, I hope John Durham is utilizing his authority to look at that, such as to look at whether or not James Comey disclosed classified information when he leaked the Comey letters, as they are now commonly referred to, disclosing private conversations with the President of the United States, executive privilege matter there too, and to see, he and Comey has admitted publicly to saying he did that so that a special counsel, Mueller, would be appointed to oversee um, the actions of his, Comey's FBI, because he had been shortly thereafter or was terminated by that. So it's sort of a retaliatory effort, which is a telltale sign of someone in authority disclosing information. But I would be looking at that pretty hard. Um, I would be looking at his deputy to see if he did it. And I would be looking at all the others that were removed uh, for violations of either the internal regulations or just because they flat out knew themselves they broke the law and decided to leave government service so they wouldn't be subject to the inspector general's investigation. You know... So, you know, we were talking about this uh, thread earlier um, by Daryl Cooper. Um, a lot of the people that were seeking accountability in mm -hmm. this case, you know, the, the, I'm talking about the American public, people I've spoken with, um, they've said things like they, they, they don't believe anything can even come of uh, this uh, Durham investigation. And there's this kind of, uh, well, the, I, I could say that the, the people I've spoken of at least feel demoralized and mm -hmm. feel like the institutions have failed them. Um, and there's, this has been replicated in many, in many, many examples. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Yeah, so I think the Russia, Russia conspiracy, Russia gate hoax was the first big investigation that sort of broke the American public's confidence in our government institutions. And then when we thought that nothing like this could ever happen again, as you mentioned, there were other instances, you know, not just the Russia hoax and the impeachment stuff, but there were things like the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings, which is a duty of the legislative branch of government to confirm an individual for the highest court in the land. And to have all of these false allegations presented to the United States Congress, and then to have them trumpeted out as if they were hard truth in fact, when they were disproven, again, destroyed the American people's confidence in our institutions. Because our institutions just don't lie in the executive branch. It's not just the DOJ and the FBI, but it's also the judiciary, the federal judges, the FISC, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, and also the legislative branch, Congress, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. So I think when you take all the events we've been talking about, they tie across all three branches of government, and you now see why the American public has lost confidence 
in our U.S. government as a whole, writ large, to hold themselves accountable. And it's very unfortunate that we are at this stage and they've been assisted, of course, by a majority of people in the media who do not want to talk about the truth. They do not want to talk about violations of law. So yeah, what I always tell people in this is to juxtaposition a separate analogy. And I would say, imagine if Hillary Clinton won the election or president of the United States. Then imagine if during the ele that election cycle, president or elect then candidate Trump hired a private law firm in the United States who would then hire a former spy of one of our allies to dig up dirt against Hillary Clinton. And that dirt proved to be false and made up and paid for by her opposition. Then all that information was packaged up and submitted to a federal court. And a federal judge said, yes, I'm going to not only spy on President Hillary Clinton's campaign, but I'm authorizing the spying on her as a president twice over when she's in office. And the Department of Justice would have signed off on that and the FBI would have signed off on that. Imagine what the media and the American public reaction would have been if the tables were turned. And that's the best example I have as to, to show the hypocrisy in the media that has aided everything from Russiagate hoax to the impeachments or be it the Kavanaugh hearings on Capitol Hill. And that is why the other half of America has totally lost faith in the American government to hold itself accountable. Well, so what about Durham? <laughs> well, as I said, if I were Durham, those, you know, the leaks investigation is something I would be looking at. The substantive crimes committed by all the individuals from the FBI director on down is something I would be looking at. Did every one of those individuals who testified before Congress, and almost every one of them did under oath, did they lie to Congress? Because we have transcripts that we can compare what they said under oath versus what the information they wrote and swore to in search warrant applications, in FBI reporting, and DOJ reporting, where their crimes committed there. And then, of course, the overarching conspiracy. Because as you know, Jan, when we're talking about conspiracy, and again, that word comes up, I always think, and I fully believe that no one person caused uh, the Russiagate hoax to transpire. We have evidence of that. We have the director of the FBI and the deputy director of the FBI saying completely opposite things in terms of what they knew, when they knew, and we also have the head of counterintelligence saying publicly, or to his lover, actually, um, when she asked him about whether or not Trump was going to win, and he literally said, no, no, we are going to stop it. I mean, imagine that. The head of counterintelligence for the Federal Bureau of Investigation in America, who is in charge of investigating a presidential campaign, says, we are going to prevent that man from becoming president.